So with that, I would like to open the session and I would call the first, um, the first speaker is um, Takashi Uemura from the University of Tokyo. He is well known for his polymer chemistry within MOFs and he received a lot of awards and I cut this short and I give him the floor now for his keynote lecture on MOFs as poly polymer manufacturers. Takashi, please come on stage. Okay, thank you very much for the uh, kind, very kind introduction, Roland. And thank you very much uh, for the invitation to this great conference and symposium. Uh, I'm really happy to visit this beautiful city again. And more uh, importantly, I'm really happy to meet many friends after the long time of the COVID. So um, I'm Takashi Uemura. Uh, from the University of Tokyo. So I'm really happy to talk about this topic. MOFs as uh, polymer manufacturers. So as he uh, explains, so I'm just going to talk about the uh, polymer chemistry using nanopore of the uh, MOFs. Okay. You know, so usually organ polymers uh, prepared in this type of macro scale. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm not familiar with this one. Uh, uh, this uh, macro scale reaction vessels. Therefore, obtained polymers always entangled like this. Uh, it's quite difficult to control the polymer primary structures. However, if we can incorporate the monomers in the uh, size reaction vessels, and then we can perform the polymerization there. This uh, power wall would affect the polymerization so much. And the controlled polymerization with constraint geometries will be possible in this system. So what kind of non-size vessels are appropriate for this purpose? Of course, we are MOF chemists, so we use MOF. And then we can program the non-size information, such as dimensionality, power size function, power size and shape, by changing a combination of these two components. And after the introduction of the monomer here and the subsequent polymerization, we will obtain the polymers reflecting host structure information. So in this case, the MOF works as a template for the polymerization. And then we, uh, by using this, this, uh, this technique, we can prepare polymers with uh, desired structures. All right. So let me show the several examples of our works. And then here we first perform the uh, radical polymerization of the binary polymers, uh, binary monomers inside the MOS. So in this case, after the introduction, uh, after the immersing of the MOF particle in the uh, Rickett monomer, we eva uh, evacuate, we remove the uh, monomer outside the host crystal, then we perform the polymerization. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, not okay. Then uh, in this case, we can, uh, we could uh, achieve a molecular weight control because of the ribbing radical nature in the nanopore, I mean the uh, radical uh, reaction, uh, very reactive uh, radical can be stabilized inside the pore. And also we could uh, control the primary structures of the resulting polymers, including the uh, stereo, stereo regularity and the reaction position by changing by the, uh, you know, so the precision pore design of MOFs. Okay, so what the next target? Next target should be the sequence control in the copolymerization to approach the elegant biological systems. So as you may know, um, control, uh, you know, so the, uh, to control the uh, sequence is really, really difficult. And then usually giving random copolymer like this. So this is one of the most challenging topics in the current 
polymer chemistry. So how can you do that? Uh, here we focused on the you know highly periodic structure of the moths because of the crystalline nature. And then here we immobilize the monomer by chemical bonding, like this. And after the introduction of the another monomer between them with regular interval, we perform the copolymerization between this, between monomer, between these monomers, to give the sequence regulated copolymers. Okay, and here we uh, used this ligand, ligand with polymerizable binary group here. Then we mix this ligand with copper to give more with one digit nanochannel structures. Then as you can see here, we could achieve periodic positioning of styrene derivative with a distance of 6.8 angstrom. The next, we added the another monomer, acryl nitrile here to perform the host guest copolymerization between them. And interestingly, after the, after the uh, polymerization, the monomer composition of the resulting copolymer was always same, three to one between A to S ratio. So which is independent of the initial monomer feed ratio like this. So what's happened in this system? We checked the uh, structure, of course, of the uh, uh, polymers, and we performed the carbon 30 NMR, and then uh, we also performed the studied uh, DFT calculation and found that the... No, it didn't work. Okay. Um, we could see that predominant, se uh, predominant sequence of, oh, sorry. Oh, no, okay. This A, 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 S repeating in the main chain. So actually we could uh, control the number of the uh, copolymer monomers like this. And then here we could achieve highly selective copolymerization in MOF. So this means that uh, we can transcribe the uh, MOF periodicity into polymer as biological system is doing. Okay, so another big issue for the polymer chemistry is chain entanglement. And I often uh, give the uh, amorphous materials like this. So this entanglement of the polymer chains needs very high activation enthalpy and it's almost impossible to anchor the chains completely. So how can you overcome this problem? Here we, uh, incorporate this crossing ligand partially into the framework. And after the introduction of mon monomer here and the subsequent polymerization, we, we could obtain highly ordered poly uh, polystyrene like this. So um, we checked the XRD and then when we carry out this host guest uh, cross polymerization, oh sorry, um, this is really, complicated to use for me. No, okay. Um, so you can see this, this, re, uh, this re, diffraction around here. So this is probably because of the highly ordered alignment of the polystyrene chains with a distance of the 4.9 ohmstrom. But is it really obtained or not? So we check the TEM. And really happy to see the, this 1D chain alignment with a consistent chain distance. And this AFT pattern also supported our expected chain packing. So now we can say that we could obtain highly ordered polymer was obtained. Then we checked the host property and found that the density of this material is much higher than the bulk amorphous polystyrene, almost comparable to the ideal crystalline isotactic poly polymers. So as you may know, uh, low and high density polystyrene are quite different mechanical strengths. 
So our polymer would show the uh, very improved uh, mechanical, mechanical strength as well. So this work showed that uh, this entanglement of the polymer chains could strengthen the polymeric materials. Okay, so in this regard, uh, I'd like to touch on the 2D network polymers. So here we use this uh, period layer morph with uh, internal distance of the eight angstrom. Then after the introduction of the monomer here with the crosslinker, we could obtain the 2D network uh, polystyrene. But interestingly, this polymer was highly soluble in many organic solvent despite the cross-linked structure. So what about the structure of the uh, polymer? We checked the AFM and found the formation of the ultimately thin polymer sheet with only single molecular thickness. So this is the first synthesis of this type of the polymer using a commodity polymer such as the uh, polystyrene uh, vinyl polymers. Okay, of course we checked the property and the uh, storage modulus of the polymer was much lower than the 1D and 3D counterpart. And you know, um, loss factor exceeds zero at the higher temperature showing the liquid-like behavior of our 2D polymer. So this is probably uh, because a 2D topological effect because the polymer chains are hardly entangled in this geometries. Okay, let me show the video to uh, feature for this phenomenon. Um, 1D polymer, conventional polymer, show the conventional elastic property like this. But our 2D network show the flowing merit character. So they show quite different behaviors in spite of the same constituent of the polystyrene. So this work shows that the, this entanglement of the polymer chain could soften the polymer materials, which highly contrasts to the previous 1D ordered system. Okay, so actually we could perform many type of polymerization. So I just saw the poly, uh, polymer synthesis for the uh, binary polymers here, but we can also prepare the uh, conjugated polymers, bio-related polymers, inner polymers, and even for the another carbon, including the uh, graphene and ribbons. So we are really happy to create a variety of the advanced polymers using the MOFs, and we can also make the many nanocomposites between MOFs and the uh, polymers. But is it the only way to prepare the advanced polymers? using the most. Okay, as you know, polymers are giant and uh, entangled. So it's quite different from the gas and the solvent molecules. So these small molecules can be easily adsorbed inside the moss. But is it possible to adsorb the polymers directly into the moss? You may say no because of two large entropic loss to anchor the chains. So the polymer insertion into most, how do we take place and which seems a crazy, crazy idea for us. But in the macroscope level, ears can do it. Okay, uh, they are now trying to find the entrance and some of them are already absorbed inside the pipes. And I often show this video, and uh, actually, they are completely absorbed eventually. So we can learn from this system. In the uh, same things happened in the molecular level. So uh, we can directly insert the polymers, for example, polyethylene glycol into the moss. So here you can see the permeation, uh, spontaneous permeation process, uh, which was uh, the uh, entropy driven process. And then with, with uh, multiple one there was CH pi and electrostatic interaction. They can be inserted inside, inside the MOS. So we can directly observe 
the polymer insertion using the large more single crystal like this. When we mass the uh, MOF crystal in neat peg, it happened along the uh, channel axis. Okay, so what can you do using this interesting phenomenon? Uh, here we focused on the you know uh, terminal functional pegs because of many applications in biology. So as you can see here, the price of these functionalized pegs are very high, very expensive because separation between modified and the unmodified peg is impossible. You know, um, so we always, always have to perform the high conversion reaction to give the highly pure um, modified peg. But this is the polymer reaction, so it's uh, almost impossible to perform quantitatively. So unfortunately, mixtures with mono and non-functionalized pegs are often sold in the market, which is really a problem for the biological applications. So, okay, uh, we try to separate the pegs with different terminal groups, a modified one and toritil modified one. The molecular weight of the peg used here was 20 kilodalton with so many repeating group, same repeating group, and only terminal difference. So using the conventional uh, separation technique, it's impossible to separate them. But you know, our morph could separate them very easily. So as, as I show, um, peg H, a modified one can be inserted very well, but peg toritary cannot be inserted because of breakage by large toritary group. And the actual separation of the peg mixture was possible. So we treated the, uh, the mixture with MOF to uh, capture the uh, peg H inside. Then after washing with good solvent for the uh, peg, we can recover the uh, peg toritary with very high purity. Uh, we, could, we could test the system with other terminal groups. And as you can see here, the insertion speed are strongly dependent on the terminal size. So smaller one showed the rapid inclusion and then larger one showed the slow inclusion or dejection. So we are really happy that uh, we could uh, recognize the terminal group by using this system. But we, in this system, we use neat polymer by heating, which sometimes limit the further application. So the next question is, is it possible to introduce the polymers directly from solutions? It's, I think, more crazy idea, but we did it. Um, actually, we performed a, a solution adsorption experiment like this, and uh, the polymers are uh, adsorbed even from the solution. Of course, depending on the solvent. But more interesting things, or rather unexpected thing, is that the larger peg is more likely to be adsorbed. So because this is enthalpy-driven process. Okay, so we could develop this system much more. Um, we prepared, uh, uh, we, uh, we performed the uh, MOF column chromatography after packing the MOF particle in the stationary phase here. Then we inject the sol solution of the uh, peg. And actually, uh, larger pegs eluted slower, which is completely opposite from the conventional SEC system because as I showed in the previous slide, the larger peg is more likely to be adsorbed. Then, uh, of course, we performed the uh, terminal uh, functional group separation. So here you can see that the terminal smaller than the pore showed the retention, and the terminal larger than the pore showed no retention, as we expected. But if you look at this data, more carefully, you can see that 
uh, Mohkaram uh, can detect only marginal differences at the alkyl termini, such as hydrogen, methyl, S and butyl group. And moreover, the subsystem position of this same uh, terminal group can be detected. So this means that we can recognize only single atomic differences in very long polymer chains. Okay, so our work would lead to the uh, new paradigm for polymer manufacturing. As you know, polymers are obtained as uh, mixtures always of uh, uh, different chain rings and the structures. So controlled synthesis or controlled polymerization has been the only the way to obtain the polymers with desired structures. But now we have a polymer separation technique using the MOS, which will be very useful to give the desired polymers alternatively. So we believe we can create a variety of advanced polymer by separation, including uh, not only the uh, synthetic polymer, but also the uh, bio uh, macromolecules like uh, polysaccharide and uh, peptide. So we call this technique as morphography. And uh, our colleague, uh, Dr. Hosono, uh, got the first prize at the pitch contest of the Society of Polymer Science in this year for this um, uh, proposal. Okay, so let me show the several examples of the homography. Um, you may know that cyclic polymer shows a very interesting property because of the no terminal group, no end group. So quite different topology from the uh, conventional linear polymers. But, you know, so general synthetic method for cycle polymers include end coupling cyclization of linear precursors. So always crude co product contains unreacted precursor and chain extended linear byproduct. So there have been strong demand for the efficient purific pur uh, purification method to isolate the cyclic product only. So uh, morphography is really useful for that. Um, we can easily separate the uh, linear, linear and the cyclic polymer. And then particularly when we carry out this uh, experiment at the lower temperatures, so linear polymers are strongly adsorbed on the calm. So we can very, uh, very easily to uh, separate them. So we did a perfect discrimination between cycle and the linear polymer. And then we can scale up this system to the gram scale separation using the prepar preparative column uh, with a large amount of the uh, MOF here. And then 100% pure cycle polymers were obtained uh, using this uh, large uh, uh, column system. Okay, so the in the central dogma, you know, the genetic information of the DNA is recognized and transcribed with excellent precision in the enzymes. But what about the artificial system or synthetic polymers? As I said, most can disentangle, uncoil, and stretch the polymers, which may identify the slight differences in the very long polymer chains. So this is like a uh, find a difference <laughs> like this. So this polymer con uh, uh, composed of the monomer Q with one, 100 repeating units. So this has a single monomer defect. Maybe you're not trying to find it, but it's quite difficult to detect by your eye. Can you? All right, so several guys already, yeah, identify here. Yes, so this is uh, um, 
you know, so they are 100 repeating units. But actually, for the polymer, so these two polymer also have a difference. So this peg has a single unit difference. Where? Maybe impossible to find. Okay. Here, and armography can detect it very easily. All right, and uh, recognition of the number sequence is also possible. Um, this morph with interactive site can allow strict uh, recognition of only a few percent composition difference like this. So we envision that the uh, uh, molecular information contained in the copolymers could be precisely read out using a morph in future. Okay, um, as a summary, a ratio design of the uh, Moh nanospaces can lead to not only precision synthesis assembly, but also the selection of the polymers. So we believe our methodology will contribute to the development of the uh, Moh polymer hybrid researches, as well as these uh, key researchers it's doing. Okay, uh, before closing my talk, I'd like to thank many collaborators, uh, particularly uh, my staff and my student for their hard working. Thank you for kind attention. Yeah, thank you Takashi for this fantastic presentation. We have time for one, two questions. I see one here and one there. Just run to the microphone <laughs> and speak loud. Vitaly Sushkevich, Paulsher Institute, Switzerland. Thank you for your lecture. Uh, I have a question to the morphography part. Can you share with us the chemical intuition you use when selecting morph for separation of a particular polymer? Or just one morph which works? Thanks. Um, Okay, so of course we can design the most structure and uh, we have so many type of the polymers. So we should use uh, uh, the appropriate more for the polymers. And then actually for the uh, terminal separation, so the size of the, uh, poor size of the morph is most important thing, I, I think. So the rest, the chemistry of the morph uh, does not affect that much, just sterical effect. Yes, in that case, sterical effect. But we can also, uh, you know, so the, uh, incorporate the interactive side of the of the morphs. Then that interactive side particularly interacts with the polymer. So it's it's another way to separate the uh, polymer. So we, we have many choice. You know. Cool. So, thanks. Yeah. Sir. There was one more question, please. Um, nice talk. Uh Chen Feng from Damas College. I have a question about your polymerization in maps and how, especially in the initiation stage, do you need to incorporate the initiator in the polymerization right. and, and any challenges associated with the initiation inside the MOF? Right, right, right. So yes, you're right. So that we also incorporated the initiator together uh, inside the um, uh, pores. So in that case of the uh, polymerization of the styrene, so the, uh, we use the AIBN as an initiator, after dissolving the AIBN in the uh, styrene liquid, uh, we put the morph particle. Then uh, initiators and the monomer is uh, both uh, initiator and the monomer are in, uh, adsorbed inside the both. Yes. So have you have you encountered any challenges during the initiation stage? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, actually in that case, yeah, if initiator is located at the outside of the pore, I mean outside the crystal, it's very hard to proceed, promote the polymerization because it's very difficult to start initiate the polymerization. So, but uh, it's really interesting that if we can do that and if we can control the particle size, maybe we can control the molecular weight of the resulting polymer. So it's the next challenge for me. Thank you very much. One last question by Thomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really excellent work. Thank, Thank you. I was wondering if you could comment on the diffusion coefficient of the crazy proposition of getting the polymer into the into the crystal, and yeah. if this 
also could be a probe for defects in the moth. Because as soon as you have one right, right, right. one defect in the yeah, moth, yeah. there will be yeah. no diffusion further into the channel. Have you um, observed this? Yeah, but in case of the peg, uh, we could incorporate the polymer uh, sufficiently. So almost quantity, uh, we could incorporate as we expected. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the diffusion is very slow compared to the low molecular compound. Does it take but, a day or yeah. how long does it take? Yes, uh, it takes time, but um, of course it depends on the molecular weight. But uh, we, we we are surprised that the, uh, we also performed the experiment using the uh, peg with very high molecular weight, uh, several million. A million. A million. Okay. That can be also incorporated. Yeah. So. Very amazing. Yeah. Thank you.